Today, let's break down this film frame grid transition that was done in the new Lucky No Bap music video. This video came out a few hours ago and Lone Wolf directed it. And as always, there were some really clean effects throughout. So I wanna show you how to do this transition that he did a few times in the video. So here are the four clips that I selected. These two middle clips are going to be the film frame kind of like grid transition thing that we're using. And one of them is double the length. So I'm just duplicating one. So it kind of repeats and then trimming it to this length. And then I'm pre-composing all of those layers together and then bringing that pre-comp over the other two clips. And then inside the pre-comp, this is where we're going to introduce all those film elements. So from the Cine Pack Super 8 film effects pack, I'm bringing on the 500T overlay with Sprocket. You guys can use whatever film overlays you have. These are just the ones that I have. I'll have them linked in the description if you're interested. I changed the blending mode to darken, and then I wanted those paint overlays that Lone used throughout the video. So from CinePack's Dirty Film Effects Pack, I brought on some of these black marks. That way it just has these paint overlays. Again, you can use whatever ones you want. I'll have these ones linked in the description as well. It just helps sell the effect a little bit more. Then there was like a bluish tint to it, so I just brought on hue and saturation and desaturated it completely and changed the blending mode to multiply. So then I pre-composed all of that turned off the visibility of that layer. That way we can add the film look to the second clip as well. It's the same process, brought on that film overlay, changed the blending mode, brought on some more of those marks, and then pre-composed all those layers together. So now we have two separate pre-comp layers. So I'm changing the scale of the top one right now to around 50, bringing it over to the left, and then duplicating them and stacking one on the top and one on the bottom. That way there's three on the left-hand side. And then for the other pre-comp, I did the exact same technique, brought it to 50%, but I didn't want them to line up perfectly. So I brought this one up a little bit when I scaled it down. So then they just don't line up perfectly and then stacking one on the top, one on the bottom. Then I pre-composed all the layers on the right and named it right just so we know what's going on and named it left. So now we have two separate pre-comp layers. I'm bringing on Sapphire Film Damage and changing some of the settings. I brought up the grain, play with the dust, the hairs, and the scratches, basically just overlays and like film damage looking things. That way it has a little bit more texture to it. And I changed some of the shake settings. That way it bounces up and down like this. Copy and pasted the film damage over to that right clip. On this one, I wanted the shake to be a lot less intense. And then I changed some of the other values. That way they don't have the exact same effects taking place on them. After that, I brought on a black and white tint and curves to both of our layers. That way they're black and white and just have a little bit more of like a grungy aesthetic. I brought on another overlay from that dirty film effects pack, changed it to screen, but I, but I didn't like the way that it was like super white. So I actually inverted that layer and then changed the blending mode to multiply. That way it has a little bit more damage over the overall thing. I also brought on Sapphire Flicker to both layers and just changed the seed value. That way they don't have the exact same flicker. And now lastly, it's time to animate that transition. That way it slides in and slides out. So to do that, go back to our main comp, use the pen tool, and then on that pre-comp layer, mask out one side of the transition. I changed the mask to subtract because I wanted the left-hand side to show first. And now it's time to keyframe the mask path, go forward a frame at a time. And if you click shift before clicking on one of these points, you can then move around these points. And I basically just used the border of the film frames to go frame by frame. So you can see I want one frame, went down one film frame, went another frame, and then just went to the border of the second one and so on. So now we have the right hand side animated in. Let's go ahead and animate the transition out. If you want the transition to hold for a little bit, make sure to make a keyframe before and then go a frame forward and then start the mask out. So I'm doing the same concept here, going a frame forward, masking, going a frame forward, masking. To transition out of the left-hand side, I made a new mask, masked around and went frame by frame, just how I did on the right-hand side. I played around with the position of the keyframes, that way they transition in and out at different times. And then lastly, on that pre-comp layer, I just keyframed the scale just a little bit, so it has a little bit more movement throughout the transition. That's the film transition that Lone Wolf did throughout the video. I thought it was super fire. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. This is the last video that I'm gonna be uploading for the month of May. We did 31 videos in 31 days. So if you haven't seen all of those already, go ahead and check out my last few uploads. Drop a like in the video. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that because 50% of you guys that watch these videos are not subscribed. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.